Het is een groot voorrecht om je woord te bedienen. Uh, I don't take it lightly. And uh, I trust that uh, God will speak into every one of our lives this morning. And uh, we trust him. Thank you, Lord. You will not fail when we put our trust in you. And thank you, Lord, that even in this morning, your word will be sharp and quick, and it will accomplish to what you send it out. In Jesus' name, I praise you. Amen. Amen. Now, in my message of the 22nd of September, uh, you were encouraged to possess your land of promise. I don't know whether you can still remember that. Take possession of your land of promise. And then during the feast, we agreed that we are God's family, and we added the inaction to that. Not just being the family, but being the family of God in action. In my last message, we took action to practically overcome the snare of materialism. May I ask, how did Black Friday go? <laughs> Any people in serious debt? I hope not. I hope not. Now, today, <clears throat> I want us to embrace the fact that to possess our promised land will not happen without a fierce battle. The enemy will not give up one inch of his territory without a fight. How do we prepare? And as we move into next year, God willing, we will more and more have to take possession of the promised land God has given to every one of us and to this church, Lighthouse. So how do we prepare? And I will focus on two phrases, two actions this morning in this message. The one phrase is to put on, and the other phrase is to take up. To put on and to take up. So let's first speak about to put on. The first statement I want to make is this. We have once and for all put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Is that agreed upon? We have put on once and for all. At our new birth, we put on Christ. Galatians 3.27 is an amazing, straightforward, wonderful verse. In the New Living Translation, it says, And all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ, like putting on new clothes. Isn't that beautiful? Ons is Christus aangetrek, soos nieuwe kleere. We put on Christ. Everyone who has been united with Christ in baptism. We were baptized into Christ, referring to a placing in Christ by the Holy Spirit. The day when we accepted the Lord, the day when we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we were baptized into Christ, into the body of Christ, and we put on Christ. Endue is, is the Greek word for that. It means to put on and to clothe oneself. And the object of this verse when it says that we put on Christ, is very personal because we put on the person of Christ. 
And the tense, the grammar tense in that verse speaks of a single complete action in the past. You do not put on Christ and then you put him down and then you put him on and then you put him down. Is that true? Once and for all, when we were placed into Christ by the Holy Spirit in the new birth, we were put in Christ a single complete action in the past. That's the first statement. Secondly, let's go a little bit further. We have once and for all become partakers of a new self, a new nature. This is When we put on Christ, we became partakers of a new self. Ek leef nie meer nie. Christus leef in my. Is dit nie so nie? All right, a new self. Colossians 3, 9, let's read. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices. Take, take note. Verse 10. And have put on, that's past perfect tense, it happened when we accepted Christ and have put on the new self, which is being renewed. Okay? There's a work in progress. We put on the new self. We got the new nature of Christ in us, but it should be renewed in the knowledge after the image of the Creator. Yeah, in this new self, when we put on Christ, there is no more Greek and Jew. There is no more circumcised and uncircumcised. Barbarian, Scythian, slave, free. But Christ is all and in all. Hallelujah. Woo! So my old culture and who I am and where I come from, <laughs> I've died to that. I've got a new self, the nature of Jesus Christ through faith by his grace. Woo. One translation says, seeing you have put on the new man. Isn't that beautiful? Put on the new man. And behind this usage of the word stands the concept of Christ as the second Adam. We've put off the old Adam. The old Adam nature we've put off. And have put on the nature of the second Adam. Jesus Christ. Our spirit man inside who were dead through sins and misrepresentations and iniquities. That spirit man was clothed. Clothed with Jesus Christ. And you and I received a new nature and a new self. Put on Christ once and for all. Received a new nature, a new self once and for all. But, point three, now, in our day-to-day -day living, we have put off the previous ways of life. That old self, that old nature was used to a lot of things that's not godly. Come on. In our BC days, it was so many things in our lives, living for self, want our own passions and desires and all of that. The old self was so used to that. But now that we got a new self, 
now that we've got a new nature, we have to put off those previous way of life. And we start to live according to this new nature now. And Ephesians chapter 4, Paul is very clear about that. He says, put now off your former way of life. Your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. A vernieuwing van die gemoed. And then he says, verse 24, and to put on, that means start living according to the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Now I know that sounds a lot, a big mouthful. So let's explain a little bit uh, to bring further clarity on what does it actually mean to put on Christ? Um, Vincent in the word study says, to put on Christ implies making his character, his feelings, and his works my own. That's mooi nee. Sy karakter, sy gevoelens, hoe God voel oor sekere dinge, sy werke, maak ek my eie, when I put on Christ. Thus, Christusom says the following, this is a little bit old English, but listen to this. This is so, so profound. He says, if Christ is son of God, and thou hast put him on, having the son in thyself, and being made like unto him, thou hast been brought into one family and one nature. Hallelujah. Hy het ons geplaas in een nieuwe familie, in een nieuwe lichaam. Een van gees en een van sin. And again, he says further, He who is clothed appears to be that with which he is clothed. Kan ek het gauw weer sê? He who is clothed appears to be that which he is clothed with. So hoe meer ek Christus in my leven uitleef, dan kan jy sien met wie is ek bekleed. En elkeen van ons, Albert Barnes says, thus to put on the Lord Jesus means to take him as a pattern and a guide, to imitate his example, to obey his precepts, and to become like him. And I think this is one of our desires. It is my desire to be more like Jesus, become more like Jesus, because I've been clothed with him. Now, the Bible is quite interesting with quite a few other places where it speaks about to put on. So what else should we put on? Let's read Col Colossians 3, verse 12. Put on, then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts. Were you we have to put on compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Put that on, Paul says. Bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together 
in perfect harmony. Nee, die nieuwe leven moet nieuwe dingen aantrekken. And I say we should put on compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, and love. Even more, in Romans 13 verse 12, it tells us that the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on what? The armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. So, my spirit man has been clothed with Jesus Christ when I got saved. But the mind still has to be renewed as I more and more put on the characteristics of Jesus. But there's also something that they call the soul, which is the mind, will, and emotions. And Gifford says the following, he says, when the Christian puts on Christ, he now clothes his soul in the moral disposition and habits of Jesus Christ. The moral disposition and habits of Jesus Christ. That is what our soul should be clothed with. Enough said now. Let's change some gears. Paul speaks here, have you noticed, about the armor of light. You seen that? The armor of light, which in the Greek is the weapons of light. This means if there are weapons of light, it means that there's a battle. Come on. There's a contest. There's a war. And you and I are very much engaged in that. Some just live obliviously and Nice every day. Now there's a war against your soul. And therefore we have to put on the armor of light. 1 Thessalonians 5.5 5. For you are all children of the light and of the day. We don't belong to darkness and night. So, three things. Be on your guard. Not asleep like the others. Secondly, stay alert. And thirdly, be clear-headed. <laughs> he always comes with confusion and deception and all that stuff, the enemy, isn't it? Be clear-headed. Be on God. Not asleep like the others. Stay alert and be clear-headed. Night is the time when people sleep and drinkers get drunk. But let us who live in the light, live in the light, live in the light, be clear-headed, protected by the armor of faith and love. And wearing as our helmet the confidence of our salvation. I like that. The confidence of our salvation. Are you sure that you're a child of God? Are you sure? And do you have the assurance of salvation? The confidence of salvation. Because the enemy will come. When you and I miss it somewhere. And he says, but you're not a child of God. Look what you just said. Look what you just did. Come on. We have to have the confidence of our salvation. 
that we have put on Christ and that he lives in our spirit, in our hearts. Confidence. Now, let's go to Ephesians 6. You know I would get there. If we talk armor, we talk Ephesians 6. So let's expound Ephesians 6 a little bit, verse by verse, if you will bear with me. Ephesians 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of of his might. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong is in the command sent, sent there. It is a command to every one of us. Be strong. How does that song say? Let the weak say I am strong. How strong? Where do I find it? In the power of his might. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> The vigor of his ability, the strength of his ability. So I will be strong in the strength of my God's ability, not my own ability with flesh and blood and bone, but in his ability through the Spirit. Verse 11 of Ephesians 6. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Put on here means to envelop in, to hide in the armor of God, to clothe yourself with the armor of God. What should I put on? The whole armor, all the weapons, wholly armed, in full armor, ready for the master. Amen? And it's not my armor. <laughs> it's not the stuff that I can do. It is the armor of God. It comes from him. It comes Provided by him. I sent in my spirit when I prepared this message. That when we put on the whole armor. We do not put on things. Or items. Or attributes. But according to Romans 13, 14. We put on the Lord Jesus Christ. We have put on the divine realities of Christ. We have put on the person of Christ with all his goodness and strength and mercy and grace and everything that he brings. We have put him on. Now, what constitutes the armor? When you read further, you find that, and I'm just summarizing I find that there's a girdle. Is that right? A belt, a gordel. What is the girdle? Truth. Is that right? There's a breastplate. What is the breastplate? Righteousness. There are shoes. The shoes of peace. For the gospel of peace. There's a shield. The shield of faith. There's a helmet. The helmet of salvation. And there's a sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And here's the bomb that dropped in my spirit. When I put on Christ, I put on all these things. Huh? Okay. Do you know that Jesus says in John 14, 6, he declares to be the truth? So Christ is our truth. 
And when I put on Christ, I have a girdle. And that girdle is truth. Because Christ is the truth. Is that right? As I Christus on him, I have truth. In 1 Corinthians 1.30, Paul says that Christ Jesus became for us righteousness. Therefore, he is our righteousness. When I put on Christ, I've been clothed with righteousness. I've got a breastplate to guard my lungs and heart and internal organs. By way of speaking. In Ephesians 2.14, it is stated that he himself is our peace. Christ is our peace. He's the shoes on my feet for the gospel of peace. Galatians 2.20, Paul says, he lived by the faith of the Son of God. So I've got my shield when I have Christ. Faith. You. In Psalm 27 verse 1, it said that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Who is this other than Christ? I've got a helmet. Salvation. The Lord is my salvation. And then the whole chapter of John 1 tells us that in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The Word became flesh. When we put on Christ, friends, we put on the Word. We put on the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And that blessed me so tremendously. Want as ek nou die stukke van die wapenrusting moet optel een vir een, en as mys partij mense wat die wapenrusting in die aand weer uittrek, <laughs> en in die ochend dan bid hy weer die hele wapenrusting in, en um, ek maak nie een grap daarvan nie, perhaps that is how you believe and see it, but I want to show you that when I put on Christ, I put on all the items of the weaponry in Christ Jesus. He, he is my truth. He is my righteousness. He is my peace. He is my faith and he is my salvation. And he is the word of God. Hallelujah. Now, what will be the outcome be when we put on the whole armor? It is when we put on Christ. Verse 11 tells us what the outcome will be. It says, we will be able to stand. Hallelujah. That means that you will hold your ground. You will abide in him. You will have covenant rights. You stand in covenant with the King of glory. Woo. I put on Christ. And those are the benefits we will be able to stand. A stand against what? All the wiles of the devil. All the lies of the devil. All the deceptions of confusing messages that you want to place in your mind. All the cunning arts, all the deceit, all the craftiness, all the trickery, all the schemes. Ons kan staan in al die dinge. All the wiles of the enemy able to stand because we put on Christ. And I want to say to you, there will be a lot of these things, cunning arts, deceit, crafts, trickery, scheming. There will be a lot of these things in the coming days and weeks and months ahead. 
the world is in turmoil. And the devil is busy wrapping up as quick as he can because he knows his time is few, short. Whew, my God is an overcomer. But it doesn't mean that we live relaxed and laxy daisy. It means that we are alert that we are guarding ourselves, that we are level-headed and clear-minded about this war. I felt a warning in my spirit to give to all of us for the time ahead. Let's read verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. And I ask myself, how and what picture do I have with wrestle? How do we see wrestle? Is wrestle changing punches with the enemy? Is wrestle rolling on the ground in a grip? Jacob tried that. That whole night he wrestled with God and he had a hip that was out of joint. We don't wrestle with God. We don't wrestle with God. Sorry. We obey and we do what he tells us. Jou heep kan uit poikie uit geslaan word as jy met God wil stoei. And yeah, sometimes friends, we know that that we come in places in our lives that we feel how and where and what and how can I go out and get out of this and and we ask all the questions, and we may ask questions, nothing wrong with that. But I've learned in my life that God takes every life on a course, and if we follow him, he will work that out for me. I don't care what happens and how it happens. He, he just guides you. He just leads you if you follow him. So I don't see wrestle as that. Another form of the Greek word wrestle here I found is to arise and cast out. If we wrestle with the enemy, we should arise and cast him out. You don't play with him. Come on. You, the Greek says to throw down violently. And I think we're not violent enough when it comes to the wrestling with the forces of darkness. I'm not looking for the forces of darkness. They are always there. They will come in times when you're weak and weary. But then we should stand up. Arise. Cast out. Throw down all the forces of darkness in heavenly places which is the second heaven where the enemy dwells. Verse 13. Got another few minutes. Therefore, because we put on Christ, therefore, and here is the second phrase, take up the whole armor of God. Take up. God will not take it up for you. You have to take it up. Come on. He has put on himself when you put on Christ. It was passive. You could do nothing about that. You just believed and he came into your life as an act of grace. But now there are some living, there are some warfare. Therefore take up the whole armor of God 
that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. When the Bible says that word, therefore, you always ask wherefore. So therefore, because we have to fight, because we have to wrestle, but also because we have his ability. Hallelujah. You can take it up because you have his ability. Take up the whole armor of God. And that means to take up and use it. To take it up for yourself. To take hold of. I, I was curious to see what is the original language for this take up. Analambano is the Greek word. This word, meaning first to take up, as in the Greek translation of the Old Testament, such senses as to load yourself. I like that. To sit on your feet. But anywhere you lay, you are not you not down on your knees. To sit on your feet. When you take it up, you sit on your feet. And then it also means to raise a song. Singing in the time of fight. Singing when you don't feel like it. Singing active praises to God. It also means to lift up in prayer. You take up the armor and you lift it up in prayer. You receive instruction from the head. You keep upright and you put on the weapons. Take up the armor. I'm challenging you. Let's make use of what God has placed within us. Come on. Use his truth. Use his righteousness. Use his peace. Take it up. Use his faith. Use his salvation. And use his word, which is the sword of the spirit. Why? Why? Because that verse says that you may be able to withstand, stand against, oppose, resist. You know 1 Peter 5 very well. Let's read it. He says in the Passion Translation, Be well balanced and always alert, because your enemy, the devil, roams around incessantly like a roaring lion looking for its prey to devour. And I like the next phrase. Take a decisive stand against him. Take a decisive stand against him and resist his every attack with strong, vigorous faith. For you know that your believing brothers and sisters around the world are experiencing the same kinds of troubles you endure. James 4, 17, so then surrender to God. Stand up to the devil. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Ons gaan leet makkelijk. We have to fight that through sometimes. En weet je wat? Dis nie eers ek en jy wat bekleen nie. God is fighting for us. <laughs> Ooh. We will sing that now, now. Just, just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Take note. Ek wil hy julle met mooi kyk. 
that verse 11 of Ephesians 6 tells us to put on the whole armor. That the believer did when he was baptized into Christ, Romans told us. Now in verse 13 he says, take up. And I want to say to you, friends, sometimes it's not enough just to put on. But we have to take up what we have put on. We have to take up the armor. Although we have been clothed with it, it is latent there, it is there, but we have to use it. Take up the armor of God. Now, when is this take up especially necessary? The Bible tells us in verse 13, in the evil day. In the evil day. And I think we're living in evil days. Young guys being killed all the time. People being uh, abused and, and misused and all that stuff. Evil days. A day of fierce battle. A day of violent temptations. A day of violent assaults. Let's finish off that portion in Ephesians 6 now. Verse 14. Stand therefore, having girded. Can you see this all klaar gedoen? Was it klaar? Having, past tense, past perfect tense. Having girded your waist with truth. Past perfect tense again. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness. We received his righteousness. Next one, having shot your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And because of all of that, we can move to verse 16 that says, above all, now you have done that, taking up the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And again, take up or take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Hallelujah. I know I'm going a little bit deep this morning, but I trust that it will help many of us to find what is in us and what we can use in the time of battle. 1 John 3, 8, you sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whatever works of the devil is plaguing you, the Son of God was manifested to destroy those works. And I say that in Jesus' name. Yeah, let's go there. Philippians 2, 9. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him, given him the name. <laughs> Not a name, the name, which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. God had given him the name. The Greek word is onoma. And do you know what the Noma stands for? It is used for all that that name implies. All authority is in that name. The character of the one with the name is there. The rank, the majesty, the power, the excellence, all of that. In the name that was given him. And the angel said, you shall call his name 
Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Verse 10, at the name of Jesus. And I thought, what does it mean when I do something in the name of someone else? Then it simply means I do it on that person's authority. Authority is very, very largely in the name. Come on. Therefore, we can actually read verse 10 like follows. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him authority, which is above every authority, that at the authority of Jesus, every knee should bow. The name means authority. Now, what does the saying mean to bow the knee? You look in most eyes, prayer word. Om die knie te buig, nee. It means to let go. I tell you that every principality and power must bow the knee. That means to me, they have to let go. They have to acknowledge defeat. <laughs> but say sterters and say bina. Hart loop hy weg. Come on. So so hond wat pak gekry het. Acknowledge defeat. He has to quit. He has to surrender to the power of the authority of that name. Hallelujah. Who is it that will bow the knee before the authority? Those in heaven, those on earth, those under the earth, therefore every opposing force. Worship team, please come up. Thank you, I know you're ready. I want us, if you are excited about your God that lives in you and that tells you, take up my armor. I've given it to you. Take it up. Take it up so that you can withstand and stand. I want us to give praise to him and glorify him. We want to end this service in a jubilation for the victory of Jesus. So let's read the last few verses. Psalm 44, verse 4. You are my king and my God. I love the next phrase. You command victories. Hello. You command victories for Israel. Only by your power can we push back our enemies. Only in your name can we trample our foes? I do not trust in my bow. I do not count on my sword to save me. You are the one who gives us victory over our enemies. You disgrace those who hate us. Oh God, we give glory to you all day long and constantly praise your name hallelujah last little line watchman nee says we do not fight for the victory but we fight out of the victory that Jesus already obtained Let's stand. Let's stand. Take up. Take up the armor. Oh, yeah. God is fighting for you. God is fighting. God.
Jesus Christ this morning. I proclaim that victory over every life in this room. We enforce that victory by the songs of our mouths and our lips, praising God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus Christ, I will live. I will not die spiritually. I will live. In the name of Jesus Christ, I know that it is by resurrection power. Because the resurrection life of Christ is in you, my brother, is in you, my sister. Take it up. Take it up. Say to your neighbor, take it up. One more time. One more time. One more time. Go. Ek spreek oor elkeen van julle een oorwinningsweek in die naam van Jezus Christus. Mag die Heere u sien. Mag sy aangezicht oor jou skyn. Mag sy liefde jou hart vervul. En mag sy genade jou voetstappe rug waar hy jou wil hee, die Heere sien jylle. Dat is waar ek vol, 